that is, there was a bunch of things that were going on, but it was pretty much mostly about my struggles with my, my speech and the stuttering uh, problem that I had. And I poured out my heart and told him uh, all what I thought in regard to my speech and the weaknesses and the inadequacies I felt that I had also. And I think he even intentionally told me that story to plant a little seed in my heart and in my head. And what he was trying to get me to do, I think, is to put myself in place of that monk that has that he was trying to tell me, hey, we all have imperfections and we're never going to be perfect. But if you just accept them, if you accept them, perhaps even make light of them and even laugh at them, it is then you'll have peace, then you'll have peace of heart. I would pose that rather than place ourselves in place of the soil, why not put ourselves in place of the farmer, that is the one who sows the seeds or plants them. That is to really think about what seeds do I plant uh, in the minds and hearts of others. That is, that is you and I are God, are God's spiritual farmers. And so we are called to go, up, go out there and plant good seeds in the minds and the hearts of others. The good thing is no profound words of wisdom or profound uh, uh, words of encouragement are, are needed on our part, but rather just every person that crosses our path on any given day to just recognize that that person might very well be sent from God and placed in our path for us to plant a seed of hope or encouragement or love. I remember how, I think in my last year of studies for the priesthood, I was going rather through a stressful and a discouraging time. That is, there was a bunch of things that were going on, but it was pretty much mostly about my struggles with my, my speech and the stuttering uh, problem that I had. And so I had an opportunity, there, there was an opportunity that came along to go on a retreat that was directed by Father Benedict Rochelle. And Father Grishel at that time was a very renowned spiritual director and author also. So it was a great opportunity. And then during that time, I would have an hour. I would have an hour to sit with him individually and to really talk about things. So I looked forward to that also. So it came, that, it came time where I sat down, that is, we took a walk and we sat down on this bench that was overlooking a pond. And I poured out my heart and told him uh, all what I thought in regard to my speech and the weaknesses and the inadequacies I felt that I had also. And so I told him all about that, hoping that, you know, first and foremost through him, I would receive some great words of wisdom and encouragement. And so he sat there and he listened very attentively. And after I was done, that is, he told me, he began to tell me a, a story that is about a young monk in his order. And he told me how this young monk in his order was a really great guy, but rather known for his clumsiness. That is, he always seemed to mess, mess things up. And he told the story how one day this monk was supposed to serve a tray of coffee to Father Benedict Rochelle and for several bishops that he, was, uh, that, he that he was meeting with and talking to also. And this, so this young monk came in holding this tray of coffee and coffee cups and he proceeded to trip over his own feet, fling the tray and the hot coffee all over 
Benedict Rochelle and the bishops also. And the monk stood there in shock and then prof profoundly apologized. But then he added, you know, I would like to say I will never do that again, but I probably will. And so I, I kind of chuckled at the st uh, story and I waited for him to continue. But that was it. That's all he said. And then he took out bread from his pocket and started calling the d ducks and the geese over that were on the pond and he began to throw bread into the water. And I thought to myself, I remember I sat there and I thought, that's it? That's all I get? It's a kind of a dumb story and not very funny either. And that's it. And so I really wasn't, you know, I really wasn't that happy at all. And I was kind of dumbfounded that's all that he had to tell me. But as the days went on, I really began to think about that very simple story. And I thought, ah, and then it came to me in prayer that I knew exactly what he was trying to tell me. And I think he even intentionally told me that story to plant a little seed in my heart and in my head. And what he was trying to get me to do, I think, is to put myself in place of that monk that, has, that he was trying to tell me, hey, we all have imperfections and we're never gonna be perfect. But if you just accept them, if you accept them, and perhaps even make light of them and even laugh at them, that is, then you'll have peace, then you'll have peace of heart. In other words, don't get so caught up in the fact that your speech isn't perfect and that you're struggling with that. And it won't be ever, but rather just focus on the task at hand. Or even, your, even focus on our gifts and talents rather than on the things that we don't have. And it was then that I felt like a great burden was taken off me. That is, through a, through a very simple story, not words of great wisdom or great encouragement, that is a very simple soul with a, uh, with a caring heart was able to give me much peace and much, um, and much focus. And I thought about that because I think it really ties directly in today's gospel. If we look at this gospel today in a little different way than perhaps we're accustomed to. That is, we all know and have heard this gospel countless times, right? For the talk about the seeds and the fertile ground, you know, and we probably think perhaps most often we think, you know, well, what kind of, what kind of soil am I? I hope I'm the really fertile one, you know, I hope I'm the one that receives that seed and bears a hundredfold. Um, you know, and not the rocky ground or the, or the thorny ground. But I would pose that rather than place ourselves in place of the soil, why not put ourselves in place of the farmer? That is the one who sows the seeds or plants them. That is to really think about what seeds do I plant uh, in the minds and hearts of others. That is, we, through our baptism and through the other sacraments that we have, as God's Catholic Christian sons and daughters, that is, that is you and I are, God, are God's spiritual farmers. And so we are called to go out, go out there and plant good seeds in the minds and the hearts of others. And the good thing is no profound words of wisdom or profound... Uh, uh, words of encouragement are, are needed on our part, but rather just every person that crosses our path on any given day to just recognize that that person might very well be sent from God and placed in our path for us to plant a seed of hope or encouragement or love. And it doesn't have to be anything great, just plant a, a little seed there to help them and let God's grace then take over and produce and grow that seed in their mind and in their heart. That is, 
The truth is, is whether we realize it or not, you and I go through each and every day of our lives planting one seed after another. Uh, we plant seeds all the time. Uh, good seeds, and maybe some that are not so good at times also. But we might not see that is the growth or lack thereof that they have, but the truth is, is that as we go through our lives on earth, we leave whole forests behind us. And so perhaps today we can reflect on and think about what kind of forest do I leave behind? That is, if we don't plant very good seeds and the forest we leave behind us will be rather barren, dry, won't have much growth at all. But if we become more conscious, conscious of the seeds that we plant, then if we had the opportunity to look behind us, we would see lush and dense forests and growth. And that is the kind of thing, that is what our Lord calls upon us uh, to really be uh, his good spiritual farmers on this earth and to plant good seeds in the minds and hearts of others, all, all those that we come in contact on a daily basis. That is, the point is, and what it comes down to, is we are not only receivers of God's word, but we're supposed to be sowers of his word also. And I think that in the end, God will not care so much about the seeds that we have gathered, but rather he will care more about what good seeds did we scatter.